So you would have to consider gravity in all your loading calculations and how you design the structure. But then it's also about looking at the materials itself. I don't think that Oklahoma City does need the tallest building. But, but. we are just like, when you think about the spec uh, that we are in this time and place, and then you think about the spec that we are in the universe in a physical sense, it's really humbling and astounding to think what impact are we doing and is it the right thing? It's hard to say if we are doing the quote unquote right thing. There are individuals responsible for bridges, highways, dams, buildings, airports, and water supply systems. These are the individuals who play a crucial role in planning, designing, and overseeing the construction process and maintenance of various structures to ensure they meet safety regulations, environmental regulations, and societal needs. These individuals are known as civil engineers, without whom we wouldn't be able to enjoy our cities. Today, I'm privileged to speak with Jennifer Nakayama, a mother of a five-year-old, a civil engineer, and the president and CEO of Downtown Oklahoma City Partnership. Sit back, relax, and enjoy my conversation with Jennifer Nakayama. As a civil engineer, how do you think buildings on Mars will be different from those on Earth, considering the special conditions like Mars natural properties and unique gravity? So right. instead of talking about urbanization, it's inevitable that at some point will be multi-planetary species. So what do you think will change fundamentally? What will be different on Mars? The blend of oxygen, nitrogen type of mix goes into how and why concrete, for instance, how it works structurally. What seems straightforward and simple as the material materials will actually need to be holistically re-looked at because a material on Earth is not going to look and feel and definitely from a loading perspective, a structural perspective, is not going to act the same. So yes, you would have to consider gravity in all your loading calculations and how you design the structure, but then it's also about looking at the materials itself and the infrastructure that would go into it. So the pipelines and you know how water that we all just turn on our faucet, our spigot, and it just magically comes out, you know, things like that. The water properties would operate so very different on any other planet as well. And so that would mean that the infrastructure to even get to the actual buildings would just need to have a totally different way of looking at, at it from an engineering perspective. I don't think that it has to go completely like scratch everything that, you know, we have ever known about civil engineering, but I think it is a little bit going backwards to try to say that a lot of research and testing and deriving about how materials are going to operate is going to have to take place for probably many years before it can truly be applied firsthand on another planet. You work for Oklahoma City. What are your thoughts on the tallest building in the U.S.? There is this concept called the Legends Tower, I believe, which if built would be the tallest building in the U.S. and the fifth tallest building in the world. Will it alter the city's vibe? Does Oklahoma City need the tallest building? Uh, I don't think that Oklahoma City does need the tallest building in order to have notoriety of uh, being a fantastic place to visit, but it is certainly an interesting concept. The project itself has evolved through many different facets and phases. It's envisioned as a mixed-use development, so there would be a hotel component, a housing component, there would be retail and restaurant, almost like a mini entertainment district. This particular project is being proposed where Ricktown District is for Oklahoma City, which is known as the entertainment and tourism district for the greater downtown Oklahoma City. So it wouldn't be out of the ordinary to have this type of development there. Now, again, back to the renderings that catches everybody's eyes that it would be the tallest in the U.S. It would be a phenomenal feat. And I say that with all due respect with my civil engineering hat on uh, from a structural perspective. But what I think is an even greater takeaway on this particular potential development is that it, Oklahoma City is being considered. Oklahoma City has been discounted counted for years and decades by so many. Oklahoma City is now on that map, so to speak, of being on people's radar for great things that can happen here. 
beyond your numerous qualifications, you're a licensed engineer with a civil engineering degree. What's something cool happening in civil engineering right now? I've heard about concrete that can heal itself. What's happening in the field of civil engineering? Like any industry, things evolve. You gave an example of the concrete and uh, new developments in concrete. Another aspect of that is looking into the not just the aggregate material, but the filler pieces within concrete or cement to make concrete. And rather than developing something that is new to science, there's been a look from a civil engineering standpoint into the environmental engineering standpoint of recycling and sustainability. There's been some work done in the areas of looking at recycled components, like for instance, used rubber tires, tires that are definitely beyond their useful life. Can that be chopped up to such a fine amount that it is then mixed in with the aggregate and provides some physical resiliency that it acts as a tire, but in a concrete slab type of way. You know, things like that. Looking at some of these recycling components has been a big push over the last couple of decades. Oklahoma City has one of the highest crime rates in America among communities of all sizes. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that fighting crime should mainly involve handcuffs and guns? Or is there a smarter way to address this problem? What I'm suggesting is that crime doesn't just happen on its own. Economic disparities, a lack right. of education, lack of job opportunities, and societal and cultural factors can contribute to criminal behavior. Maybe we should invest more in education and offer free university studies for students who pass certain exams, perhaps providing grants to artists who create work promoting values like diligence, patience, and love could make a positive impact. Just think about it. Governments around the world often provide support to electric vehicle companies to promote clean energy. Why can't we also promote clean behavior? so-called clean behavior. What do you think could be done differently at a fundamental level to improve the current situation? That is a really good point, Ivan. I think that there's a lot that can be done. Many cities, both the public side and the private side, have been historically focused on what is here and right now. But I think there is also a need to step back and say, well, if this is the problem, like say crime, right staring at our face, what led to that behavior? Looking at the workforce opportunities, looking for programs that will help with earlier diversion. These same things we were talking about, workforce development opportunities, job skills, just educational components. It is about the story before the story. Just talking to our local chamber of commerce this morning and the legislative agenda to go to the state legislature this year, looking at micro-credentialing programs. Is there a way to entice folks that they may not be attuned to a four-year traditional university type of degree program? They may not even really be uh, positive about a two-year or one-year credentialing. So how can there be something of a micro-credentialing or a smaller chunk of job skills set training? That's what I think that a lot of major cities need to look at, the program before the program. This video was made possible by my friend David Ginsberg of HRS Inc. David and his partner Sweet Attacker and founding partner Dave Smith represent a retained executive search firm specializing in assisting business improvement districts, downtown, center city, and economic development organizations in identifying highly qualified and diverse slates of candidates for C-suite positions. HRS Inc. uniquely combines deep recruiting expertise and relationships with the subject matter expertise of a partner who has actually been CEO of a downtown organization. Learn more about HRS Inc. on the company website, hrsinc.com, or contact David directly. He's a really nice guy. You mentioned your son. Your son is yes. five, right? My son is turning four in April. You also mentioned that you are an older parent and I watched the video where you explained that it took you 10 years to finally have a baby. Yeah. So first of all, to me, you look pretty young and oh, thank you didn't you. mention thank your you. age, I, I wouldn't know. You're so kind, <laughs> thank you. But uh, since you spoke about it and you seem to be okay with this subject and with this kind of topics, I'll ask you a question related to parenting. Sure. When my son was born, I was 32, still relatively young, but what a challenge it was waking up every couple of hours short after his birth, then all these feedings and diaper changes. <laughs> At some point I lifted him so much that I twisted my shoulder. At some point I was thinking, am I breaking apart?
Now <laughs> things are significantly better as my son is getting older, but parenting was 100% different from what I expected it would be. In your opinion, what are the advantages and disadvantages of having kids in general? And how easy or difficult is it to be a parent when you are established, settled versus mm -hmm. when you are fresh out of college? To touch on what you were saying. So yes, I am an older parent and I was told once upon a time by a doctor or two that it's an actual medical terminology of being a geriatric parent medical definition, not all of that emotional um, distress that the geriatric term labeling me has in my mind. But that aside, my husband and I had been through many fertility treatments and medications and procedures over many years. And then we were finally blessed with our son. <laughs> Flexibility more so with both income and time lends itself, I feel, just to a greater and deeper parenting experience, not just for myself and my husband, but for our son, too. I feel like I can be a physical presence, a part of his life more so now than maybe I would have been if I started parenting when I was in my 20s. I hear you when you feel like you're breaking, quite literally. Yeah, I think my, my husband went through something very similar where he uh, just, like you're saying, the nature of literally holding the child for hours on end. I think parenting is an unbelievable gift. It doesn't come without its frustrations <laughs> for sure, too. But I think an age thing for me related to that, for both my husband and I being older, we have been able to figure out patience when it comes to parenting as well and perspective. Sometimes the simplest things are the root of happiness. I personally try to measure my own happiness levels and I notice that I feel the happiest when I wake up at 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the morning before my family wakes up. I open the door to the backyard and drink my morning coffee while staring at individual leaves of trees. When people say that the world is getting better, it is a better place. I tend to disagree with it because I personally think that it's both bad and good and there is a balance between the two. When we talk about the growth and expansion of cities and towns. We discuss changes in land use, infrastructure, and social, economic, and cultural aspects of a community. Mm -hmm. So here's what I want to ask. Do we need to expand? Do we need to improve infrastructure and build more roads with higher buildings? There is more waste and more traffic with more people. In concentrated areas, there is more competition and more crime. Do you think that urbanization makes humans better? Or is it just a part of our genetic code to never stop being curious and to never cease pushing the envelope, even when there is no apparent need for that. You hit, hit the nail on the head. I think it is part of human nature to want more and to different people. That means more. The more definition means different things. Um, often it turns into items like urbanization and urban sprawl. As development comes in, positive cash inflow and things like that into an economy, you are going to tend to see urbanization, that money being put into components of infrastructure that are going to lend themselves to more urbanization. Whether or not I think that it's necessarily a, a good or a bad thing, I and you'll appreciate this having a little one of your own. My son is way into dinosaurs right now. But sometimes Mine too, you know, by the way. Like dinosaurs rule everything in our house. But sometimes when I'm reading a book to him and undoubtedly mispronouncing all kinds of dinosaur names. I think about how many millions of years ago these creatures existed, how different life supposedly was. And to think that we as humans, we think that this is the greatest time of all. But in reality and very philosophically, like you were speaking of, we are just like when you think about the speck uh, that we are in this time and place, and then you think about the speck that we are in the universe in a physical sense, it's really humbling and astounding to think what impact are we doing and is it the right thing? It's hard to say if we are doing the quote unquote right thing. Life becomes what it becomes. Right now, the period that the human species are in, the evolution of society and of life, I think does mean urbanization. We've used the term on this recording many times about balance. And I think it should be a balance because there is still a very refined beauty of the undeveloped pieces of land and nature. We've covered a variety of topics and now I would 
like to give you a moment to share what you're currently working on. Maybe you have something on your mind, then you would just want to talk about it. Downtown Oklahoma City Partnership is a combination of six different districts that make up all of downtown. It is about Automobile Alley and Midtown and Bricktown, City Center, West Village and Deep Deuce. And each of those that I just named, those six that I just named, all have a really interesting personality to themselves, which makes it really fun. You know, they each have their own types of restaurants and shopping retail. They also have a different blend of office mix or residents. To come to Oklahoma City, a lot of people do visit because Bricktown has the notoriety, as I touched on earlier, about being that entertainment or tourism district, but really finding that it is beyond solely Bricktown and that there's all of these other areas of downtown to enjoy. But nobody can deny that having a canal, a waterway in the middle of downtown, which is in Bricktown, is a really special thing. So it's a man-made canal and it is wide enough that water taxis go up and down. That is a signature piece of Oklahoma City. It is a really non-traditional downtown and that there's a, more than just businesses here. You know, it's about residents. It's about tourists. It's, it's a fun place to be. Nice. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it.